Hi, my name is Christine Bennett, and I am the Program and Service Specialist with the Epilepsy Foundation New England. And I am here today to show you how to set up your patient gateway. I know that it can be a little complicated, a little confusing, but I'm hoping that I'm able to help you to be able to set this up and get this going. Um, and, you know, being able to help every step of the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off my camera so that way I can show you um, the PowerPoint slide I have that shows you step-by-step -step on how to set up your patient gateway. So again, my name is Christine Bennett and I am the Program and Service Specialist um, with Epilepsy Foundation New England. So where do I go to get patient gateway? That's kind of the biggest question, right? How do I get started? And why should I get patient gateway? Because that's a really great question as well. Well, patient gateway is a portal that allows me to have connection with my doctors. Um, it gives me instant access to my medical team, either by sending an email or a message directly to my medical team, which can be really helpful because we know playing telephone tag with our medical team can be really frustrating where sometimes the information is lost um, and we don't always get the information back that we want. So being able to send a direct message is nice because then I'm able to put in exactly what I want to say they're able to respond back to me. And then if I forget what they ha might have said, I can go back and get into my account again and review that message. Um, it also allows me to check for test results. So I can see exactly what my tests are that come in and I can review them myself. Um, I can also look at my visits so I can see what upcoming appointments I have and which ones I had. Um, and it also allows me to make appointments right there. So you're not having to call and be put on hold or waiting for someone to call you back in order to make that appointment. So there's a couple ways in order to get to Patient Gateway and, and to be able to set it up. Um, if you don't have access to a smartphone, then, and you do have access to a computer or to the internet, you can type in Patient Gateway in your Google or in any other type of search search engine you have, and then it should come up. So again, patient gateway, gateway is one word, and then it should come up with this, the Mass General Brigham patient gateway login page. Um, from there, I can go ahead and click that link, and it will take me right to the login page, page of patient gateway. The other place is actually downloading the app. So if you go to the app store on your phone, I have an iPhone, so I can go to the app store. I type in patient gateway in the search bar. So I click the little search icon in my app store. I'm able to type in patient gateway again, gateway being one word, and it's pulled up. So this is the app that I want to pay attention to. There are some others that are not um, pertinent to what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, and there's others that are like it, but the one that we need and the one that you need is called Patient Gateway. Um, it should have looked just like this. And then it should have the word get. I have open only because I've already downloaded the app, but you should have get right next to it. So you're gonna click it to download your app. Um, and when you have that, you're now gonna be able to go to the login page. Now, if you have, um, you know, and, and this will look pretty similar to either on your phone or on the internet. These um, screenshots are actually right from the internet, but again, it'll look very similar to your phone and be the same setup. So if I am already a Patient Gateway user, I can put my username, my password and hit login. If I know I've set Patient Gateway, but I can't remember my username or I can't remember my password, I can click some of these icons and it will help me um, get back or reset my password. But for today, we're gonna, going to head to start off and say that I don't have a Patient Gateway account and I would like to get one. So on this login page, I'm gonna hit Enroll Now and I'm going to click that Enroll Now button. Once I click that Enroll Now button, it's going to bring me to this page. Now, if you happen to have an activation code that was given to you by your doctor's office, so let's say they emailed you an activation code saying, you know, this is how you set up Patient Gateway, this is your activation code, type it in. This is where you would type in that activation code. Put your date of birth and hit Next. 
but we're going to say that I don't have that. So I want to get patient gateway, but I haven't told my provider yet, or I haven't told the nurses or the secretary that I want to be able to get patient, um, patient gateway. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enroll now without an activation code. So I'm going to hit click enroll now. And then it's going to bring me to the screen. So in this screen, I am going to be entering in all of my information. And we ask that um, you have to be over 18 for the enrollment, um, age of 18 and up, I should say, um, for the enrollment of this. So you have your first name, your last name, you know, your street address, your city, your state, your zip. All of that information is entered. Anything with the red star is required and you can't go on or proceed to the next um, slide until that is finished. So you're going to go ahead and enter in that information, put your date of birth, um, female, male, unknown, home phone number, your mobile number, email address, and you'll enter it in twice just to make sure that you've entered it in correctly. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click, I'm not a robot, and then hit the next button. Then it's gonna bring me up to a step up two step um, verification. So to set up a two step verification, why is that important? Well, the two step verification allows me an extra set of security so that I know that it's me that's accessing my account that no one else can get into my account but me. Um, again, it's just a way to protect you. So definitely hit continue. And then what it's going to do, it's gonna to ask to actually verify my identity. So, okay, is this you? Are you the person? Um, so I can either ask it to send a code to my email or to my phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and just for my own purpose today, I'm gonna to click text to my phone. So on my phone, I should get a text from the number 622, 622. And in there will be a code. Um, a six digit code that I'm gonna place inside this box right here. Once I place that code in there, and it, again, it's not this number, this is the number that it's coming from. So when you get this text, um, you wanna click on the text from this number and inside should be a different number to click in here. I'm gonna go ahead and click verify. And then it's gonna take me here where I can then now pick and choose my username and password. So I always say it's a lot easier for your username to use your email address, something that you won't forget, um, something you know. So use your username as your email address. And then your password, um, pick something that you can remember, something that you know. Um, and it's important to use a combination of numbers and letters, lowercase and uppercase. And you're gonna retype your password again. So you're gonna put in your password twice. Um, they're just making sure that it, you're typing it incorrectly, and that's the password that you want. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And now it's going to ask me my notifications. So do I want to get notifications from this app on my phone? And I'm going to say yes, and I want to get email notifications, and why? Well, if I get email notifications, that allows me to know exactly, you know, it reminds me of appointments coming up, but it also lets me know if there's a message from my doctor's office wanting to get a hold of me. Um, and then I'm going to put in the email address that I want to get alerts on. I'm going to retype it. Enabling text messages is great. You want to put that as yes, because that allows me to know if there's a message in my app as well. So if I'm not checking my email, but all of a sudden I get a message that says, you have a new message in your patient gateway account, I can go ahead and click it right away. Um, it also helps remind me to have appointments, which is really helpful. So I'm going to put in the phone number that I want that to go to, and I'm going to type it in twice. And then I'm going to put sign in. Um, when I click that, it's then going to ask me to accept um, their information and their um, conditions, um, allowing you to know that you know this is their information, your information. Um, and I'm going to click accept. And now it's going to bring me right back to my patient gateway login. But now I'm a user, right? So in here, I'm going to put in my email address and I'm gonna type in my password, and then I'm gonna click log in. And when I log in, it's gonna ask me one more time to verify my identity. So again, I decided to text my phone, and then I put in that code, just like we did before in that box, right? Type it in and hit verify. Once I do that, it brings me into my patient gateway account. Um, once you get in here, there is a tutorial that you can actually use to kind of tell you how things work. 
I would definitely say, yes, go ahead and play this. Um, it just allows you to give you some information. So after I've watched my video, I'm in my patient gateway account, and now I'm able to kind of go around and see what I have. On the right side, we'll have a list of my providers. And in there, I can actually see when my appointments are and if I have any messages. Um, down here too, we'll also have messages that are waiting for me and appointments as well. Um, I can go ahead and click this button here. This will take me to my visits, letting me know when my appointments are. If I wanna send a message to my provider, I'll click messages and then kind of follow the prompts there. If I wanna see my test results, I can do here and I can even see if I have any outstanding bills. The other place I can do too is if I go ahead and I click the menu button um, that was on the side, I can go back and show you. So if I click this button here, this window opens up and it just gives me a little bit more information about my um, medical information, which is really helpful um, to be, you know, you want to be an advocate for yourself and you want to know um, exactly, you know, how you can get involved in your care. Um, you can schedule an appointment. Um, this is also, um, a place where you would go to for your virtual appointment as well. So if you have appointment in here, you would go to your visits on the date of your visit and it would actually have a button that says start virtual appointment, which is really helpful. Um, you have your test results, you have a list of your medications. It's also great because when you click medications and if you need a refill, you can refill it right from here, which is so helpful and so great. My health summary, um, letters of your doctors, after you're done your appointment, you'll have a letter sometimes of um, the appointment kind of outlying maybe what you talked about, what it was about, which is really helpful. Um, also in here, if there's any questions that you need to um, answer from your clinician, it'll be in here as well. And a lot of the times if you go to your visit and you click your visit and you click the visit um, that you're coming up. Um, so if you're seeing your epileptologist, and they have questions that they need you to answer prior to your appointment, you can actually click the visit button and go right there for your questions as well. And your questions will be pulled up right there for you. Um, if you know that you were supposed to have questions for before your um, appointment and you don't have them, you can always message your provider, um, your epileptologist and say, hey, you know, I, I was supposed to get questions before my appointment and I did not receive them. Is that something I need to do? as well. So again, this is just a great way to be able to have constant access to your medical care and your medical health, which is so important for you to be a strong advocate for yourself. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and I'm going to start my video and I want to say thank you. I hope that this was very helpful on how to set up your patient gateway account and also how to access any questions or questionnaires that you might have from your physician um, prior to your appointment. Again, it'll show up on that menu that I showed you or on your visit tab as well for you to complete. Um, that should be completed prior to your appointment. So it's always helpful to double check your patient gateway every once in a while to see if there's anything in there from your doctor prior to your appointment. Um, you can even check in prior to your appointment. I know we get calls saying sometimes kind of going through this COVID question screening. Um, all of that can be done in Patient Gateway. So thank you so much for your time. I hope, hope that this was very helpful and have a great day.